Hey everybody, welcome to Sounds Like a Drum at Cadence Independent Media. And today, as you can see, uh, we've finally come around to talking about toms together. All the toms together working as a unit to sound like an instrument together. videos we've talked about different types of tuning on toms we've done single toms we've done a lot uh, with one tom this one in particular and there is still one more thing to address with toms which is the idea of them as an ensemble working together almost as a single instrument or as a group of instruments that um, that makes sense together and sound like a family and all that it seems like usually when we get this question it has to do with them sounding consonant and together almost musically like a certain interval or a matching to a certain song or a certain key that kind of thing and I want to say out front that I don't uh, I don't adhere to tuning to the song in terms of like having these be the notes of the key or a chord or something like that um, and if anything I'm usually tuning one of the drums away from a certain note because it might be dissonant with the bass or it might be confusing with the low end of the piano that kind of thing um, on the other hand, in order to get certain sort of tones out of each of the drums, I do have a little bit of a scheme that I think of as a bass line thing for pop and rock and modern sounds, um, which this kit is sort of designed for, just like based on the sizes and everything. What we're doing today is we're going to start with this as the sort of bass line, which is the batters are tuned medium, as you'll hear um, or have already heard, and the rezos on the rack toms are up around a minor third. I didn't use a tuner, I just did it by ear, so they're not dead on a minor third, they're just somewhere around a minor third higher than the batter. The floor tom, I don't tune the rezo as high because there's a lot of more distance between the two uh, membranes, so I tend to do something more like a half step, maybe a whole step on the bottom, higher than the top, um, but generally I want more beef out of the floor tom and maybe a little more sustained because it's a lower frequency, it's going to get swallowed up faster. So you can have shorter sounds um, in the collective from the rack toms because they are smaller, they speak quickly, but to get a good tone out of the floor tom you need a little more sustain and girth out of it. These drums today have clear two-ply batters, clear one-ply rezos, and everything you're hearing today is one AKG 414 right here, just like normal. And we added a D112 kick mic um, just so that there's some presence from the kick for when everything's mixed together. Um, minimal miking in general, in my experience, is overheads and a kick mic, and then you start adding things after that. So this is sort of, you know, we've done this before, but it's, it's minimal addition to the normal thing that you're expecting to hear. And as usual, no EQ, no compression, none of that. This is just the sound in the room going into that mic and that's it. What we're gonna do, first of all, is just play each of these toms individually so you can hear where they're at. And it's safe to say a minor third higher on the bottom heads. I don't think I'm gonna go ahead and play the bottom heads. I just want you to hear the pitches of the toms as they're speaking. Um, also because if you saw our earlier video about tuning to the shell pitch, um, the two pitches of the heads work together to create the note that the drum makes, kind of working together. So if you know the pitch of your batter and the pitch of your rezo, that still doesn't tell you the pitch that the drum's going to make. You have to do a little math to figure that out or just you know, grab a guitar tuner and see what comes out. Now with this head choice and no close mics on modern drums with suspension mounts, these are very attacky. There's also a fair amount of tone, um, but they're pretty bright and they're not down in finger tight land. They're actually fairly firm to the touch. And I like using this kind of tuning, especially if the room mics are going to be utilized a lot. Um, sometimes I'll muffle them a little bit, but generally in a boomy room, a larger room than this, 
they're going to throw the sound pretty far because they're not tuned super low. And um, I think that probably the main thing to do when you're talking about making them go together is to play every combination of two together and see if you like the sound of them together. If they're too close together in pitch, it's going to sound a little bit like an out of tune guitar chord or something like that. And if they're too far, they may not blend as they sing together. Now this is a three tom kit and that means that we have more options than with a two tom kit in terms of the array of sounds we can have at one time. And that means that what we can do to explore this is, uh, as an exercise, pick the middle tom, leave it where it is, and start experimenting with the outside toms and see what happens when we spread them further away from what we'll call the middle tom, or if we bring them closer together, or maybe just raise one. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna boost the 10 up higher and lower the 16 and just kind of see what that gets us as an array, a wider array of sounds. Um, some drummers who I admire, um, Billy Ward in particular, um, who's incredible, uh, he's said in past interviews that if he has a two tom kit, he likes the snare to be the highest voice, but if it's three or four, he'll often pitch the higher tom, the highest tom, past the snare. It'll be almost like a timbali, and then the snare is the second voice, and then down the line. Alternatively, some people um, in the jazz idiom, for instance, um, like Dave King, at times will tune the bass drum higher than the floor tom, and sort of utilize the floor tom as the aggressive kick sound, and leave the, the regular bass drum as more of the blended bop kind of open and overtone laden thing. And this is also fun. Well, Elvin Jones did this too when he had four toms. Sometimes he would tune the furthest lower than the bass drum. And all of a sudden the ideas that you play start, the, the, like the pitches start to be out of order. The voices start to be unexpected and you get different ideas because you're hearing these relationships in unexpected places. This is a much wider interval between these outside ones, even though it was only like an eighth of a turn on each of the lugs. Um, and already I'm liking the 16 more than it was before, and I'm liking the 10 a little bit less. Um, you can hear like doing like a roundhouse fill like that. It's a pretty big spread of pitches. Um, and with the snare off, it's, it's an even larger kind of family of notes. I feel like it really depends on your drums too, like the bearing edges and the heads you're using, all these things are going to affect the stuff differently if you're using suspension mounts or different suspension mounts than these even. Um, and not to mention like die cast hoops versus if you have triple flange or wood or something like that. All of this is going to come into play. But the main thing is that I think you want to have a similar sound out of each of the drums as a starting point if you're going for this kind of ensemble sound. And then concern yourself with the note that each of the drums is making once you're happy with the sound of each of the drums. Because once the sound is good and you've got similar intervals between the heads, you can just go up and down with both of the heads a certain amount and kind of stay in the same like tone range. And then if it's too high, you can just back them off a little bit. And if it's too low, you can raise them up a little bit. Uh, and also, even between the 10 and the 12, I think that the happy interval between the two heads is not necessarily the same. Just as the 16 is not as wide of an interval, when you start dealing with different depths and different diameters, swearing by a certain interval doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because that's getting away from the idea that the sound is the point. And an interval is not gonna get you a sound. It's gonna get you to a certain tension and maybe that's a good sound, but the interval is not the sound between the heads. Um, my jazz drums that are 8x12 and 14x14 14 14 are not tuned the same way as my rock kit, which is a 13x9 and a 16x16. 16 16. 
even if I'm trying to go for the same sort of sound out of them, they just don't behave the same way. So that is really coming back around to what are your drums? What do you want them to sound like? Now here's the other direction. Let's go down and get these kind of closer together in pitch and see what happens then. I'm gonna stick again with the same sort of interval between the two heads, but 10's gonna go down past where it was before, and the 16 is gonna come up past where it was before. So basically where we're at now is these two are, to my ear, too close together. They're not really sitting in their own space. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the interval is, but again, I'm not that concerned about that. It's just do I like the sound of it or do I not like the sound of it? And I encourage that kind of mindset when you're experimenting with this kind of thing so that when you're going into a professional situation, you're not worried about those things because it's too much to think about, in my opinion. If you have a tech and it's their job to handle that stuff, Super, but if you're playing or if you're recording, you don't want to be sweating about the intervals being specifically this or that or the notes of the toms being specifically this or that. At the same time, the floor tom being this high, I'm getting a kind of wild and cool tone right here, but it's coming a little bit away from what I imagine a floor tom sounding like in a pop scenario or a rock scenario or something where you want punch out of it and you want a sound that's going to hit you in the chest acoustically as well as in the microphones. So sort of to sum up, the main thing that I think about intervals between the toms is that you just want each one to have a similar tone and you get that by largely tuning the heads to the same interval between each of the toms. In this case, it's sort of a minor third with these and then a little less for floor toms or power toms. If you have square toms, you might not be able to get away with bumping up the bottom head that high before overtones in the top start to get out of control. So pick an interval whatever you like, make it the same, a whole step, minor third, whatever, ish, and go ish with all of your toms and see if you like the sound. You may have a bad head, you might have one drum that's a little bit wonky or something like that, but all things considered, it's really about you liking the sound and it's about each drum having a voice in the mix. If you only have two toms, it's a little less of an issue, but if you start to get to three or if you roll with four, you, you really need them to be their own personalities, but then also sound like they're in the same family. So bottom line is, if you use similar heads with similar intervals between the two heads, you're gonna find pitches that make each drum happy. And hopefully, if you've got two inch differentials, or in this case, a four inch differential between toms, you should have enough diameter to be able to find a great pitch that makes the drum happy that's also far enough away from your next drum. If you have a 12 and a 13, that's okay. I mean, I worked with that a few days ago. It wasn't a problem. I pitched the 12 up a little more. It wasn't a big deal. Because we're talking about fractions of a turn here also at tension. It's not like a whole turn or something like that. The whole span like that this tom went through was less than a whole turn in this. It was maybe like three quarters of a turn. And it's a 10, so like that's gonna happen. We're gonna do one about jazz toms soon, which is gonna involve higher tunings and making those consonant with each other and how to get those to carry out, especially with the bass drum that's pitched up that sort of behaves like a tom and has the beater coming off of it and all of that. And uh, yeah, so please, if you like this, uh, like, comment, and subscribe to the video. Click that little alarm button to make sure you get our notifications. And uh, let us know if you have preferences for tom intervals, whether it's between the toms or just in between the two heads. And uh, let everybody know because, you know, it's a community. We need to share all this information.